Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're going to deep dive into the brand new version of Lightroom and show you what's what. So like I've just said, basically today we're just doing an impromptu video to basically introduce the whole new Lightroom system, including the amazing masks and run through exactly how you can use them to improve your photographs. If you're new here, then hi, I'm Jess. Uh, welcome or oh, welcome back, you know, whichever one you actually are. Don't forget to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. I upload a video every single week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it and it would be really great to have you along for the ride. So today we're looking at a picture of Amber. Amber is owned by the wonderful Sophia of Pets by Sophia, who is just awesome. I'm gonna use this image of Amber to just kind of cover off a few of the little features that we can implement using the new updates in Lightroom. Now it's really important to remember that actually we've not lost anything from Lightroom since the last update and yeah I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic for the duration of this video because that's what I use anyway to be honest. Now if you know me you know I do most of my editing in Photoshop and not in Lightroom but I think these tools are going to really change exactly what's possible within Lightroom Classic. So you can see on the screen right now, this picture of Amber, and we're in the Lightroom develop module, just like we would normally be. So nothing's really changed in terms of the interface and how it works. The only difference is that we've lost some of the tools up here. Now, it turns out we've not actually lost those tools. They've just moved. And the easiest way to explain exactly what is happening here is, do you remember when we would add a brush or a radial or a linear gradient into Lightroom, all they were were local adjustments, they were specific adjustments, otherwise known as masks, okay? So there's, there's a few little different things that we're gonna have to work through to make all of this make sense, but we've not lost those tools, they're just hidden. These tools now exist within this little icon right here, which is all about masks. So masks, just think of them as a local adjustments, and if you look carefully, we've got our brush, linear gradient, and radial gradient still here. So the most important thing to remember is that we've not lost anything, they've just moved. And the functionality and usability of those has moved and changed a little bit as well. So instead of thinking of it as just an individual adjustment that we can make, what we can actually now do is stack different local adjustments on top of each other to include or reject certain areas of the image. Now, I, I don't personally shoot a lot with skies. So for me, this is a bit of a difficult one for me to show. I want to show you how I personally would use these tools on this image. We have all of our original adjustments which all live in here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a double mask situation and that hopefully will explain exactly what you can do with these new tools. So if you notice Amber's head here is super bright. It's not blown out because we've got no clipped highlights happening but it is super bright and I would just like to kind of like tone it down a little bit. What I want to do is go ahead and select the subject. So this is a totally new tool. This is powered by the same AI that does Photoshop's select and select a mask just like we would normally do within Photoshop and as you can see this red area is the selection it is the mask it's the local adjustment and the adjustment that we're going to apply is going to apply to just the area in red. Now if you find that a little bit overwhelming a little bit confusing you can go ahead and toggle in this little menu and change how you view the mask if you find it difficult to see those colors. And you can also go ahead and change the color of the mask to make things easier to see. Totally up to you. At this stage, you can also go ahead and change the opacity of that area and that adjustment. So as you can see, as we pull the slider up, the red area gets more solid and the same in reverse is true. We can also do it to show either the inverted or the um, unaffected area. That made no sense, but you know what I mean. So we can either use it to show what's selected or what's not selected. I actually personally prefer to work in the opposites, but that's just me, so I'm not gonna change it for this one. So I'm gonna leave it to show the affected area, i.e. the selection, i.e. amber, because that's our local adjustment, okay? 
So when we've got this kind of in place and sat right here, what we can then do is go ahead and apply an adjustment just like we would used to do in Lightroom. Instead of me having to hand mask all of these areas, all I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull down the highlights uh, and you could, if you wanted to, pull down the whites as well, but you don't want her to look too muddy, okay? So then up here in the mask section, you can just go ahead and click the little eye to turn that mask on and off. Now, that adjustment is affecting everywhere on her in terms of all of the highlights and all of the shadows. Let's say, for example, that I don't want to have that adjustment on anywhere other than the areas that are quite highlighted. So that, now what we're doing is we're pairing two local adjustments, two selections, two masks together into one, which makes it a little bit more interesting. What I want to do is take this mask that we've applied on amber and say, hang on a minute, I only want you to apply to the lightest areas of white. So in this instance, what I can do is go ahead and click into that mask layer there. We've got our subject selection and then you've got these two little buttons which say, do you want to add something? to that selection or do you want to subtract something from that selection? So what I actually want to do is do a, do a subtraction, but of the opposite of a selection, which again, probably will have lost quite a few of you, but stick with me, I'll make it make sense. So in this instance, I want to subtract anything that is not a certain level of brightness. What I'm gonna do just because it's the way my brain works is go ahead and add a subtract on this adjustment. I'm gonna select a luminance range, remembering that luminance is brightness. So if I select a luminance range, it then lets me have a eyedropper, which I can go ahead and move around the screen to select a certain pixel. Now these pixels, these are the ones that you're wanting to pick within your luminance range. So you just click once on the area that you're wanting to select and that has given us this little area here. Now, over here we have got the little toggle which allows us to fine tune our selection, make sure that we've got only what we wanted in that. So I'm gonna keep it super specific. So then what I wanna do is just invert the luminance range. So what I've done is I've selected these bright areas and said, remove them from my adjustment, but I don't want to do that. I wanna do the exact opposite of that. I only want the adjustment to affect that brightness range. So all I need to do then is just grab this luminance range option here, the three little dots and select invert. By selecting invert, what we've then done is we've told Lightroom to only apply this adjustment to those particular pixels within that subject mask, okay? So it's kind of, we're kind of going about in a roundabout little fashion here. Just a little tweak on the top of there. Want a little bit more, I think. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Okie dokie. So then looking at this, because we know we can do a select subject, we know we can select the subject. We also know by using that invert tool that we can select everything but the subject, okay? What I then want to do is do an adjustment of the background. So let me show you how I would do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my masks section here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new mask and this mask is gonna be the subject again. So we've selected the subject. I'm then gonna go ahead and on those three little dots, invert the mask. So now we're selecting everything but the subject. And then at this stage, all I then need to do is just do a global adjustment, but it will ignore the subject, okay? So we don't want it to look too false, but we just wanna throw a little bit more attention straight back out onto Amber there because she's looking freaking gorgeous. So in this instance, I'll just do a few little tweaks here and there. And with that one on and off, that makes quite a considerable difference. Let's go and look at a sky because that's when this tool really comes into its own. Okie koki, so we're gonna use this image of Alfie. This is straight out of camera raw. It looks cool as heck. So let's go ahead and change some of the white balance that's going on here. In fact, I'm just gonna use the little drippy dropper and put it on his head. It is quite a cool shot because it was a cold day, you know? Let's lift some shadows, do some globals and we're looking at good. But let's take it further with using our new little friends. And this time we're gonna go ahead and grab a mask and we're gonna select the sky. Ta-da, the sky is selected. So with the little sky selected there, thank you very much, Mr. Sky, you can then go ahead and apply your presets if you've got presets saved, or you can go ahead and just do a manual adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and 
darken that sky off a little bit, maybe make it a little bit more blue, increase the clarity in it because, you know, drama, 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 drama. And that's looking pretty good. Now, let's say I wanted to just make the top bit a bit darker because top bit's a bit light there. We can go ahead and add a new mask. So I'm gonna ignore that one, go ahead and create a new linear gradient. And this time I'm just gonna pull it down straight across there and what I'm going to go ahead and do is just turn down the general exposure of that and maybe deepen some shadows and then what I want to do is pop the dog through that so this is my mask I'm going to subtract the subject Honestly, it's really quite simple when you play with it. So in this instance, what we could do is go ahead and create a new mask. This one's on the subject. Do you see how quick this is? And then on this one, we could go ahead and increase the exposure just a little bit, maybe the contrast on him. Maybe we could go ahead and increase the texture on him, maybe a bit of clarity there, not too much, going a bit far now. Da, 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 da. And let's say we wanted to also have that effect coming around onto the floor, not a problem. All we need to do is add something. And this time I'm gonna add a brush. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just paint a Rooney, all of that down there, okay? So now the light's kind of making a bit more sense, a little bit, and we've gone from there to there in Lightroom, which quite frankly is particularly epic. So we could go forward, add a normal radial, just like we would do, create a mask, radial gradient, go ahead and pop those eyeballs. I'm gonna go ahead and add one of my presets, Sharpen Eyes, which is, uh, there is a tutorial of how to do that on the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another radial gradient, and that one's gonna be this eye, and kaboom, image is complete. I mean, it's a bit wonky. Let's go ahead and do our auto transforms. There we go. Now that's looking good. I'm quite happy with that. Simplest edit I think I've probably ever done, but straightforward nonetheless. Final thing, dog with white, dog with white, make it whiter. Easiest way to do that now is, well, you can still use your brush, but you can go ahead and use your color range selector. Go ahead and select the yellow. You wanna make sure that you're selecting yellow on the subject. As you can see, it is ignoring these black parts here. It's got a little bit of the warmth coming through in his head. So I'm just gonna go ahead and narrow the refinement of it. So I'm only getting his coat down here. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is drop the saturation by about halfway. Now this mask is operating on things other than the subject. We don't want that. So do you remember what we do? We go ahead and subtract the subject so now when we've added that, do you see how it's ignoring all of Alfie, the dog? We want to alter that. So we want to do the exact opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and invert and then it will only be operating on Alfie. We've done our DSAT and that one before and after is before, after. Overall before and after. Okay, right. So then the final thing I would do probably because it's me would be to go ahead and add a radial only this time slap a big one on there. Make sure that it is inverted. So it's only applying outside there. And then I'm just gonna pull the exposure down a little bit. I'm gonna lift the shadows, but pull the exposure. The new Lightroom is particularly epic. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll see you all again really, really soon.